The first home cook to try for an apron is one of the competition's youngest, 26-year-old Sabrina from Montreal. I'm good at this. I don't think that there's anything that I couldn't cook. Everything I know about cooking comes from my family. We're a big family. I had to cook to help out. My sister gets in on it, and we kind of compete with each other. Who can do it faster? Who can do it quicker? It's on its way. My sister is not just my sister. She's my best friend. This competition is pretty important. It's I'm giving up quite a bit back home. My sister is getting married in two weeks. Do I be there for my big sister, who's always been there for me? Or do I give it my all? Because it's Master Chef. Each home cook will have five minutes to plate their signature dish for the judges. If Sabrina can get at least two yeses, she will earn a white apron and move forward in the competition. What's your name? Sabrina. What are you making today? I made uh, medaglioni ripieni with uh, wild mushroom and goat cheese in a fresh tomato sauce with uh, roasted eggplant folded in. Who taught you how to make pasta? My grandmother. I come from a long line of home cooks, pasta makers. I'm in a mixed Italian-Canadian family. Have you made this dish before? Yes, I have. For me, it's second nature, right? Are you done? I'm done. Sabrina, who's your biggest food critic? Probably my sister. Is this a dish that you think she'd be proud of? There's all the elements I know she loves. Beautiful aromas here. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Chef. Is that your own recipe, your family recipe? It's a sauce that I grew up on. It's a recipe that comes from trial and error. Trial and error, eh? Trial and error. How are you? Nervous. <laughs> you made the pasta? I think I've made pasta more times than I can count. It's pretty. There's a real combination of confidence, insecurity. Where does that come from? I guess I know my food is good. I just don't like to shout it at the top of my lungs. Are you sure it's good? I know it's good. Okay. You know, Sabrina, there was a lot of heart in that dish. Nice ravioli. Sauce, need a bit more liquid. It was a bit dry for me. You're good, but I'm afraid it's a no. Hey, Chef. Sabrina, there's no doubt that you have skill. That's a fantastic ravioli. That pasta was textbook. So you do want this, right? I'm stuck in the middle because of what I'm giving up. What are you giving up? My sister's getting married in two weeks. My only sister. So, it's a lot. I was criticized for taking the choice to come and it's almost like I'm ashamed to want it so bad. Who criticized you? The woman that taught you how to make that dish? Yeah. It's ironic, because she's probably the reason why I'm a yes. Thank you. Sabrina, you put out a dish today that was off the chart. It was absolutely spectacular. I think you have a very difficult decision to make. You can go to your sister's wedding, or you can come up here and get an apron from me. I 
I did what I had to do. I love my sister, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. It's on, man. It's so on. I felt guilty, and now I'm really proud. The dish that we're about to show you will determine your fate in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. And just like Cirque du Soleil, this dish hails from Quebec. The dish that you'll be making is tortière, the crème de la crème of meat-filled pies. I've made pies before, I've made meat before. In my mind, those two things do not go together. My sister and I make tortière every Christmas. I'm feeling so confident. The trick to making perfect tortière is twofold. First, the pastry must be delicate and flaky. Second, the rich meat filling must be perfectly cubed, cooked, and seasoned with an aromatic blend of herbs and spices. We want you to create your own irresistible version. To help you do that, we're giving you a specialty pantry filled with a bounty of extraordinary Canadian meats. Bison, wild boar, pork, elk, and red deer. Tortière is a dish that was traditionally baked using the lesser cuts of meat. It would be the legs of game birds, the hind of game animals. It is one hefty meal. I'm keeping my pie super traditional. Cinnamon, cloves. Sabrina. Hey, chef. What kinds of meat did you choose? Good old traditional pork and some bison. It makes me happy, it makes me feel like I'm home. <laughs> I know there's a lot at stake for you because you are missing a big event to be here. Yes, sir. Today's a hard cooking day. I'm missing my only sister's wedding. Is that weighing heavy on your mind? Yep. I have to nail this. I'm making this tortilla for her. Well, good luck. Thanks, chef. Sabrina, please bring up your tortilla. I'm giving up my sister's wedding to be here. Nothing is kicking me out today. Tell me what you put in your tortier. Bison, pork butt, nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon. It is lovely and moist, and the seasonings very subtle. Tastes delicious. Thank you. Great depth of flavor. The crust, perfectly baked. Crispy on the outside, in the center, nice and buttery, flaky. You're choking up, what's going on? I'm just thinking of home. <laughs> well listen, you're missing your sister's wedding. But I think for a massive opportunity. Hey, chef. Really great job. Please go back to your station. Tortier is not an easy dish to pull off, and you all did a perfectly respectable job. Some of you did much better than that, but we have to send at least one of you home tonight. Sabrina and Michael, please step forward. Two very different dishes, but very similar in one respect. They were both delicious. Well done. Both of you, please take off your aprons and head up to the gallery. I'm safe for the next day. One more day in this kitchen can mean all the difference. I did it. I did it for home. I did it for my family and my big sister. The only time I've ever had a truffle was in an omelet with nothing but beautiful shavings of black truffle. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Chef. So what are you doing? Steamed asparagus. And I'm going to saute in some butter. And I'm going to crust and panko and deep fry egg with some beautiful black truffle shavings and some toasted walnut garnish. Wow. You gotta be very careful when you deep fry something like egg because it can explode right in your face. Ten minutes! David's really cutting it close. There is a risk of me not finishing, but I'm gonna get it. I don't give up easy. If my egg's not poached perfectly, I'm going home. You should be plating by now! All of a sudden, it's like ten seconds left. I'm like, holy jeez. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Shoot. Just another 10 more seconds to finish it off. Would have been golden. I really think it looks beautiful. 
It's like a piece of art. I put this on my wall. Sabrina. Yes, sir. Please bring up your dish. That yolk better run like the Nile. What is this? A panko crusted poached egg laying on a bed of asparagus and black truffle shape. When I cut through this egg, what should I see? You should see the yolk running out and making a glorious sauce with that truffle. Well, let's give it a try. Look at that. That's like me, yellow magic. <laughs> wow. You know, eggs, asparagus, truffle, match in heaven. And you slice the truffles nice and thick, so you get the full punch of full flavor. I want to devour that whole dish. Fantastic. Chef. Some high praise. <laughs> Something very special happening here. You have the richness of the egg, the acidity and the asparagus, the earthiness and the truffle, and it's all balanced. You've captured the essence of a truffle. In this elimination challenge, you were given an opportunity to honor Eric Chong's favorite ingredient, savory black truffles. And there were two dishes that did just that. The first dish was made by a home cook who has consistently made simple dishes with great results. Tonight, they attempted something a lot more complicated. And that home cook is Sabrina. Great job. I'm so excited. This is changing my life. Handmade tortellini blanketed in a rich, cheesy sauce. I got this. And I'm half Italian. I'm not going to go out on pasta. I've never made tortellini, but I've made pastas before. I think I can do it. The secret to this challenging dish is threefold. First, your fresh pasta must be rolled to the perfect thickness and folded with absolute precision. Second, your customized filling. It must work in harmony with the third most important element, your sauce. Rich and perfectly seasoned with a luscious, creamy melt that is culinary bliss. I've got to make something delicious. My sauce has to be delicious. My pasta's got to be fluffy, airy, and awesome. Sabrina has started her pasta dough immediately. She's gonna knead it right now. She's gonna allow enough time for resting. Oh, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> when you work the pasta dough, what you're really doing is getting that gluten in the flour to come out and it makes it very, very elastic. So then you can roll it out when the time is right. One minute, you have one minute left, come on! I want to see some beautiful tortellini dish in one minute. Come on, guys, last stretch, you can do this. Looking good, you're looking good. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! I kept it classic, but I kept it delicious. I'm confident putting this dish in front of the judges. My tortellini is stuffed with Italian sausage and broccoli. I cooked out some shallots and garlic. Beautiful shaped tortellini here. I'm not surprised, though, because we've seen you with pasta before and I hold you to a very high standard when it comes to pasta. This is good, but I know you could do better. You know, Sabrina, you're a go-getter, but I think you need to push harder. What's holding you back? Just used to a certain comfort. Are you scared of failure? I'm scared to push. You should reach higher. This just got real, and it got real up here. You want me to bring it? I'm bringing it. You want me to cook? I'll cook. You know, the thing with chocolate and bacon, you don't want to put too much chocolate because it's difficult to find that balance without having the chocolate become too overpowering, too sweet. 
I was given bacon and chocolate, probably expecting to be a dessert, which is just not how I'm rolling. The judges are telling me that I have to push myself even harder, so I'm making deep fried chicken wing with some chocolate bacon mole. Italian girl knows Mexican too, huh? Mole, 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 mole. <laughs> well done. If this isn't out of the box, I don't know what is. Top 10, here I come. 10 minutes, you have 10 minutes left. Okay, Hans, you need to work with me now. But who do you think's struggling? Look at Cody, he is shaking. He's struggling to play. I haven't seen much going on at Kristen's station. She's doing a, basically a chorizo and grape jelly taco. I have no idea what's going on over there. And Sabrina, she has really done well with her chicken wing, from what I can tell. She's got a good foundation to it. She's the one to watch. She's a good home cook. Four minutes left. Not lots I can do about that. This looks the way I want it to look. It's gonna be down at the wire, but it's looking pretty good. Do you think Michael's turned a corner in this competition? Let's see what he does with his plating, though. Definitely got the licorice in here. Beautiful, liquor sauce. Wow, it looks like John is pulling it together. Look at his dish. One minute! In one minute time, someone is going home. I think I nailed it. Who doesn't like a bit of mole? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! Sabrina, please bring up your dish. Today is the day I have to show them I'm in this to win this. Deep fried chicken wing in a Mexican chocolate and bacon mole sauce. I cooked my mole down with some cinnamon sticks, cumin, jalapenos, and chili powder. I love Mexican cuisine. A simple cuisine, but it's also very complex. And you chose one of the most difficult sauces to master. I went out of my comfort zone, like you had asked me to. I see he pulled this off. But that mole sauce, that's very good, Sabrina. All these flavors and textures that you have going on in here are extraordinary. It indicates to me that you have a lot more to offer. Great job. Thank you, chef. Please go back to your station. The appetizer is the fig flower. They're fancy, they're easy, and they're delicious. Great job with the fig, Sabrina. Christopher. Yeah? You're overcrowding your pan, and you're gonna have a soupy mess. Figs are all water. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Everything's looking good. Let's start plating right now. What do you got here? It's a fig wrapped in prosciutto, stuffed with an herb cheese, garnished with some nice crostinis. And what's the dressing? The dressing is just a simple vinaigrette. That's a nice portion. How does it taste, though? We're waiting for you to see. You mean you haven't tasted it, and you're asking us to taste it. You taste it first. OK. Oh, wow. Whose idea was it to do this dish? Sabrina, is it your idea? Yes, Chef. I think it's a good idea. Chef Claudio is impressed. <laughs> it's amazing. But I think you have a home run. Thank okay? you, Chef. I'm over the moon. Chris, I need you to be more mindful with the croutons, sure okay? Listen to Sabrina. This is her dish. She earns the respect. Please welcome a very special guest, Chef Graham Elliott. Howdy, Home Cooks of Canada. Acclaimed chef and Master Chef US judge. <laughs> chef Graham Elliott for Master Chef US comes out of the box, laying down all. He's what every young chef aspires to be. Sabrina, how are you? Hi. Oh boy, I'm starstruck. What do you have going? I've got a vegetable medley pickle. Quick little pickle. I love this idea. I'm soaking some beautiful sardines with some salt and lime. Wow. So have you done this before? I've done grilled sardines. The fact that you scored these, and not only scored them, but I mean, look at that. They're perfectly spaced apart. You look like you know what you're doing. Thanks, Chef. Really? Good luck. Graham Elliott. What? Five minutes. You have five minutes left. I want to see some really fantastic plating. My presentation normally sucks, so I gotta really focus. The one thing that can really lead them down the wrong path is by putting too much on the plate. Less is more. It's restraint. Mm -hmm. And that is a tough thing when you're a young, enthusiastic yeah. home cook. One minute. 
judges are going to be impressed by my plating. It should be as close to Graham-esque as possible. I hope the judges want to taste this. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! The second dish that we like to taste was made by a home cook who created a dish that fully honored tiny, beautiful ingredients with attitude and style. Sabrina, please bring your dish up to the front. I made grilled sardines, playing on a medley of pickled vegetables and a simple soft-boiled potato dressed in lemon juice and parsley. It's still glistening, not overcooked. You know, everything's seasoned perfectly. The only thing I would do is some kind of sauce component, a light little vinaigrette, just something to help kind of enrich it. But aside from that, near perfect dish. Thank you. It's beautifully cooked. You're definitely someone that should not be underestimated because you are a threat in this kitchen. Great job. Thanks, Chef. I'm making pistachio roasted lamb and uh, sweet potato puree. I can't always be flying under the radar. I need to win this. I need to strike the right balance of sweet, savory, so to go with the lamb. I want to do a caramelized pear and sweet potato puree, and I wouldn't mind doing a better dish than Claudia. I'm going to do a ragu with some chanterelle mushrooms, oven-dried tomatoes, pearl onions, and crust my lamb in a little bit of pistachio, some mint, some basil, some coriander. Chef Claudio is a super impressive chef. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Chef. You almost seem too calm. It's as if you're just, you know, cooking for a, a Tuesday night supper. It's funny that you say Tuesday night because Tuesday night's my date night at home. Oh, is that right? So... So I'm cooking for my love. I'm cooking for my boyfriend. He is my number one fan. It's tough being away for a while. It's so tough. Look forward to tasting it. Thank you, Chef. One minute, you have one minute left. I'm gonna change this plate. I want it to look tighter and cleaner. Looks good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Uh, pistachio crusted lamb rack with a sweet potato mash with some roasted garlic and goat cheese folded in, some butter glazed carrots. Sounds like a lot, but you got it done. And it, the presentation is really quite nice, very clean. You show off the lamb, you've got wonderful contrasting colors. Very nice cook on it. You know, the beautiful thing with a wonderful rack of lamb is that you want to have it showcase itself. So simple seasoning, salt and pepper, a little brush with the mustard, the pistachio. You've made lamb very happy today. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Strong dish. I got this in the bag. It's mine. I feel like dancing. We like the way all of you cooked your lamb, and it's obvious that Chef Claudio inspired all three of you to push yourselves. But the home cook that impressed us the most... My fingers are crossed, my toes are crossed... ...was... ...Sabrina. Congratulations. I just won my first mystery box challenge. I'm feeling awesome! I'm the person in this kitchen who's cooked the most. Every challenge but one. It's my turn. I would like to brine it in buttermilk, something simple. What is it about buttermilk that makes the perfect fried chicken? I love that sour element that it gives the chicken and all the breadcrumbs stick to it. It's beautiful. I'm gonna keep the chicken very simple, a little cayenne pepper, a little paprika for flavor. Now, the one thing you have to be careful when you're seasoning is that if you have too much spice, the spice will actually overtake the delicate flavor of the chicken. Some cayenne pepper just for that little kick of heat at the end. Hi, right, Sabrina. Hi, Chef. Ever made fried chicken before? Oh, yes, I have. How about the gravy? I love my gravies, so I'm just reducing my cornstarch. I'm going to build a dark roux and have a nice chicken gravy. Who's going home? 
I want Lynn to go home in this. You think Michael's a better cook than her? Michael's got more than just meat and potatoes behind him. Looking forward to this. Thank you, chef. One thing about a fried chicken dinner, I certainly do not want lumpy mashed potato. Sabrina has a potato rice, so she's just f Using a ricer is the superior way whenever you are mashing anything. Sabrina is the most calm, cool, and collected out of the whole bunch. I'm so confident I'm even passing my potatoes so they're silky smooth. Show off. I guess I cook better when I'm upset. Our plates look so similar. Standing in front of our plates, I can tell my plate is really strong. I'm pretty nervous. There's uh, six of us left, and by the end of this, there's going to be five. Sabrina! So who would you cook this for? My brother, my brother-in-law, my boyfriend. Well, it looks good. Do you think this is perfectly cooked? I'm hoping it is. Wow. Yeah. You nailed it, eh? You can see how tender that is. Look at the juices flowing out. What's in it? What did you do? Uh, buttermilk hot sauce as a bath, and then the dredge is cornmeal, flour, some paprika, oregano, cayenne, garlic, and onion powders. You got the seasoning, the right amount of spices, the crispiness. This is something I would have every day. OK, I'm going to try the drumstick. You happy with the way that's cooked? I'm really happy with the way that's cooked. I think you should be. You had a panic look on your face there for a second. It's good crunch. Hmm. <laughs> that, Sabrina, is pure southern comfort. Wonderful crunch. Beautiful. Did you try the gravy? I did. And you were happy with it? I was shut. Hmm. That surprises me. I find the taste to be a little unpleasant. Maybe it's just a little too much of the roux. I don't get that light, sweeter note. Flavors are not quite right for me. Oh, I'm terrified of losing. I'm scared of failure. I think it's why I set my standards for myself so high. Sabrina is excellent at plating and it's very hard to produce something beautiful and tasty out of a pressure cooker. There's nothing she can throw at me that's gonna throw me off my game. This is going to be the dish of the competition. Sabrina, how are you? I'm good, you, chef? What are you making? Tagatelle pasta and braised lamb shank in a pressure cooker. How often have you used a pressure cooker at home? I don't use a pressure cooker, but I'm very familiar with how it works. And that doesn't rattle you? Why would you be using the smallest burner for a pressure cooker? Is it on its smallest burner? Good luck. Thank you. My pressure cooker's singing. Sabrina is a lamb in the pressure cooker. She's making fresh noodles. My pasta is giving me the hardest time right now. If this doesn't work out and I go home on pasta, I'll be shamed by the Italian community of Montreal. Five minutes, you five minutes left! David's taking his ice cream out. It's still a little bit soft. Wow. It looks a bit loose. It looks a little thin. I have to start freezing this darn ice cream. Gotta get it into the freezer. It's gotta work. Looking pretty good. Look at Sabrina. She's still with the pasta. We are either about to taste the freshest pasta we've ever had. Oh, no pasta. Oh, no, <laughs> no pasta. Come on now. One minute, you have one minute left. You better start playing now. David has got everything on his plate except the ice cream. But he's leaving it down to the wire. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Sabrina, please bring your dish up. This is a braised lamb shank and king oyster mushroom tagatelli. 
I've been waiting to be able to braise a proper piece of meat. And would that have been your tool of choice to do it in, a pressure cooker? It's the only tool I can use to do it in 60 minutes, chef. That's right. The lamb is unmistakable. Rich, bold flavor, the wonderful herbs, the red wine. If I could change one thing, I would want a little bit more of that brothy sauce, just to really make it sing. But it's a great dish. You should be very proud. Yes, chef. You barely had this noodle on the plate. Wife's that? I wanted my dough to rest properly. You rest it any longer, it would be resting in peace. <laughs> To me, texture, but that noodle is perfect. Good techniques here. You did a nice job. Please go back to your station. David, which protein are you gonna choose? I'm gonna go with the venison. So venison, I've actually only eaten a couple times. I've never cooked with it, but you know what? It's an animal loin, so I'm very familiar what to do with that type of protein. Who are you gonna give the picro to? I've seen Cody fillet a fish, and I wasn't necessarily impressed. Pickerel is a tough fish to deal with, and that's about the only protein that I really wasn't hot on using. David, who are you gonna give the rabbit to? The rabbit? I know it's actually not that easy to cook. I'm giving it to Sabrina. She's my biggest competition. I wanna see her sweat. I'm giving her the rabbit. I'm from an Italian family, and we have rabbit a lot. Thank you, David. The final four now have just 90 minutes to create 21 stunning dishes. The two home cooks who do not advance or go home at the end of this challenge will face off in a final pressure test for a spot in the finale. They have to duplicate a restaurant quality dish 21 times. All that in 90 minutes. That is not easy by any means, even for us. I mean, just the butchering and the filleting, that's gonna take a whole chunk of their time. I'm making rabbit two ways, so I'm stuffing my rabbit with rabbit mousse that I'm gonna make with the hind legs. And it's going to be served on top of a Jerusalem artichoke puree with an elderberry red wine sauce. I think the rabbit is actually, in my mind, the most difficult to do out of all the four proteins. Because it's a very delicate piece of meat. It's very challenging. Rabbit mousse is all about texture. You're looking for a silkiness. Every step has to be respected. This dish can go two ways. Either it could be mind-blowing or a total disaster. I'm worried about my rabbit mousse cooking all the way through because that might mean that my loin dries out. I can't risk these rabbit loins drying out, so I'm gonna wrap them in bacon. Sabrina, what are you making here? I'm making rabbit two ways, so my rabbit is stuffed with a rabbit mousse. So one way isn't enough under all this pressure. I'm taking the risks I need to take to end up in the finale, chef. Yeah, but someone's actually gonna go home today. It won't be me, chef. I'm right on time. All right, well, good luck. Thank you. Next to present their plate is Sabrina. As I'm putting down my plate, I'm finally satisfied. This dish should earn me a spot in the finale. Here you have rabbit two ways on top of a Jerusalem artichoke puree, charred green onions, peppercorn toasted pine nuts with a elderberry and red wine sauce. It looks delicious. Thank you. Let's try it. Sabrina has obviously displayed great technique. She has uh, used the loin, stuffed it, wrapped it in bacon, and then pan roasted it. It's a very tricky technique to achieve, especially in the 90 minute cook. That rabbit is absolutely delicious. Seasoned very nicely. There's one misstep on this rabbit. It had one minute too long in the pan. It's a little bit dry. Other than that, it's a knockout dish. Sabrina's rabbit dish was excellent. It's the first time I've had rabbit, and I would definitely have it again. Now, Lynn and Sabrina will face a decisive pressure test, which will send one of them to the finale, and one of them home. This is the most important pressure test in this whole competition. Lynn, Sabrina, the star of this pressure test is 3,000 years old, and one of the most popular and coveted ingredients in the world chocolate. This next pressure test features our favorite chocolate desserts. My idea of the perfect chocolate experience is the dark chocolate brownie with handmade vanilla bean ice cream. It is pure 
decadence. When I think of my favorite chocolate dessert, I think of this. Creamy white chocolate creme brulee. When you break into it, it's very important to get the right combination of sweet, crispy, and smooth. I'm a fan of milk chocolate, and it's the star of this mouth-watering classic with a complicated twist. A silky, smooth milk chocolate mousse with the fresh passion fruit center. You have to make it correctly for this beautiful filling to flow out. These are our favorite chocolate desserts, and you will be making all three of them. Lynn, you look a bit stunned. To make three all at the same time, that's almost mission impossible. Sabrina, how do you feel about making three desserts today? Call me crazy, but I'm excited. <laughs> Should be interesting. Sabrina is such a tough competitor because she's like a pit bull. She just doesn't give up. Please come up and have a taste of what it is that we expect from you. I'm a little bit scared because Lynn has done a lot of replication challenges and nailed them. It has to be done a certain way. It's very regimented, just like the military. Please go to your stations. Lucky guys. I'm really happy I'm up in the gallery. They have to make three desserts. This is crazy. You will have just 90 minutes. So use your time well. This is the cat fight that will end all cat fights. This is a fight to the finale. Lynn's not taking my place in the finale. Not now. Game on, girlfriend. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. But this is a very difficult challenge. We're talking about three different, very intricate chocolate desserts. <sighs> Definitely toughest challenge in MasterChef Canada history. I think professional pastry chefs would struggle. I came here to be in the finale. This has to turn out perfect. First thing I do, I get my brownies going. Those things have to bake and cool down fast. Both of them are doing the brownie first. I am expecting that chocolate brownie to be soft, moist, and mouth-watering. Sabrina. Yes, chef. You were sounding pretty confident at the top of this cook. Is, yes. Is that confidence level still there? Didn't come here to finish third. I came here to finish first. Is there any one of these three desserts that is going to be the most challenging for you? The chocolate mousse, chef. If there's any air bubbles or gaps, in that sphere, there it goes. Tricky. Yes, chef. Well, I'll let you go, because I can see you're under the pressure of this cook. I'm in the zone, chef. Five minutes! You have five minutes left. And remember, it's a replication, but taste is king. My brownie is coming out really well. It's nice and dense. It's also cutting really clean edges. That looks about right. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! That doesn't work. You know, desserts need to look absolutely beautiful. One shake of the hand, one misstep with piping out that chocolate, and you've got to start that plate again. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, heads up! At this point, I'm thinking, I got this. Sabrina's good at plating. Lynn is good at taste. If this goes to the person that makes the prettiest plate, Sabrina's gonna win it. Now, we will taste all your chocolate desserts, and this will determine which one of you will advance to the finale. Sabrina. Chef. What was the hardest about the creme brulee? the burnt sugar without taking it too burnt and making sure it's the right thickness. The most important thing is that tap. And if you hear that crack of the shell, then the sugar is done right, okay? If it doesn't crack, it's too thick. Here, so let's crack. Let's dig into this. That's very nice. It looks velvety smooth, it looks, okay?
the egg and the cream, perfect. It's smooth, it's velvety. As I bite into that burnt sugar, it was not even. Parts that were thick, and there was parts that were not so thick. But overall, good job. Great job. Well, certainly at first glance, it looks like a very, very good replication. The cut on your chocolate brownie looks very precise and clean. Let's try it. The ice cream, I think, is wonderful. Beautiful consistency, has that hint of vanilla. The brownie, I get that dark chocolate richness. I just find this a touch on the dense side, and I, I, it, I'm concerned that it may have needed just a little bit more moisture. But a very, very good replication. Well done. Me and Lynn are both strong players. We're neck and neck. And now we're down to the final dessert. I have to say, this looks very elegant. You think you achieved the liquid center that we're looking for? Yeah, chef. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Wow. That is a sight of beauty. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Fantastic. Thank you, chef. Lynn and Sabrina, the three of us were completely amazed by what you achieved in this final pressure test. Both of you have displayed the kind of skill and determination needed to win this competition. But unfortunately, there is only one spot left in the MasterChef Canada finale. And that spot will go to... Lynn. Oh. Oh. Sabrina, you should leave here feeling very proud of what you've achieved. Cooking is what you were born to do, and we can't wait to see how far your skills take you. Please come up and say goodbye. This competition opened my eyes to how much I need to make food part of my everyday life. Listen to Sabrina. This is her dish. She earns a respect. Master Chef Canada has taught me to believe in myself. It's beautifully cooked. Great job. I may have not finished first, but oh man, I'm going to take the culinary world by storm. <laughs>